Okay, I'm gonna let you into a secret. The reason most people slide into my DMs is to ask me for templates that I've talked about on Twitter. It's a real thing. And the one I've had the most requests about is my feedback guide. So I thought I'd just share it with you here on YouTube. It makes sense that I've been asked about this a lot. This is what I share with clients during their refinement round. So we all have our own businesses. We have different processes, but most of us have that stage in our business where we're asking clients for feedback if they need any refinements or amendments before they sign off on the project. And that can be a little tricky, right? Because trying to get the feedback that's actually helpful can be a challenge. They don't know our business like we do. It's why they're hiring us. But saying, you know, in my case, I don't like that button or that picture with no explanation as to why or what it is they're looking for, that um, communication can make things difficult. And we obviously want to meet and exceed our clients' expectations. So one thing I've implemented only last year actually was to provide a feedback guide so that I can help support my clients in providing constructive feedback and minimize those emails back and forth or even calls sometimes. So I'm going to walk you through it. Access to this template is in the description. You just have to sign up. You will access this and all of the templates that I've shared this month. The only thing I'd say is this one is maybe less helpful because this is a design feedback guide. So if you're a website designer, you're in luck. If you're not, you will have to customize it and make it your own. So you'll see here, I've just got a welcome at the top and when feedback is due, I usually house this page in a client portal. I create those in Notion. I'll share that later in the month, but that's stored in there. So we've got a backlink as you can see. Then I've got some general guidelines. So these are just really simple, applicable to pretty much everyone. Refer to the brief and deliverables and make sure your feedback is in alignment with what the project was set out to accomplish. Be honest, but constructive, be specific and try to provide screenshots or examples. This is a big one, especially for designers, but it's I think applicable in all cases to be able to see exactly what the issue is. Be clear on specific elements. If you require changes, be clear about where you want those changes. So again, that's more applicable to website design, but maybe it's applicable to you too. When making requests and provide examples, Always keep your ideal client in mind. So again, we want to make sure that we're thinking about the end user of this service. And often that isn't the client. In website design, that's especially the case. Often I'll have a client that has a certain aesthetic or design style that they would love to have as their website, but it's completely opposite from what their users need. So we have to consider the end user. Then please complete feedback and return with X working days and you obviously just change this out to whatever your process is. So I've got some key questions here. Who is your target audience? What's the problem that we're trying to solve? What's the desired outcome? What emotion are we trying to evoke? Again, this is a big one for design. And then what are the key deliverables and criteria? I really want to make sure that the feedback is in alignment with that because as you know, changing project scope halfway through is really not very helpful. And so I want to try and keep things on track with what our agreed upon deliverables were. So then I've just got some examples. So here we've got, I don't like the design and I'll put some questions to help here. And then I'll also give an example. So rather than this, try this. And so I'm encouraging them to be very clear and specific. And these are just some common ones that I get in website design. Yours will be different, but I think it's a really good idea to have the questions here and then give them a clear example of what's good and what's not good. Because then when they are giving you feedback, they can refer to this and make sure that they're being really clear. So that is my feedback guide. As I said, link is in the description. I hope that you find it helpful. If you do and you're enjoying Vlogmas, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified when I post my next video. Tomorrow, I think we're looking at testimonials and how to get those from clients. I've got a form to share. You should come back for that. I'll see you then.